Hey everyone, Oz here. I have two uh, special guests from my community today. I have Sergio and I have Abe. How are you guys doing today? Good, Oz. How are you, Oz? I am doing great. Thank you. We were chit-chatting before we started the recording, so I was trying to get to know them a little more. Uh, they, they've been in my community for a while, so I, I know them uh, through their names and what they do, and they're having massive success, but this is actually the first time that I had a chance to have a face-to-face -face with them uh, and get to know them a little bit, so I was asking them about what they've been doing and how they came into the industry. But I think we'll just repeat that process, guys, if you don't mind. So if you can tell me you know, how you know each other, where you are right now, and how you got into this business, if you don't mind. All right, so first we're at our office. It's a little office right here. But um, I met Sergio in high school. We weren't friends back then. However, um, I got into the industry by tutoring some girl in one of my economics class. She got me in the industry started doing a little of the um, cold calling myself. The boss saw that it was going well with us energetic students and then um, told me to hire a few people and Sergio was one of my classes and he wanted to get on board. Yeah, so um, we got into the industry about two and a half years ago. Um, it was really tough when we branched out on our own to um, you know, start our own ISO shop because we started off cold calling like any other traditional yeah. um, ISO that starts, that's the, the only way they do it in the industry or where we were working, it was only cold calling. They weren't doing any marketing, any other strategies to get in clients. And they were having massive uh, success because they had been doing it for almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, they, they knew the industry. They knew how to talk to these guys. Um, they had big renewals coming in. That was, you know, a big source of income for them because they had merchants who had been with them for five, six years, you know, so they would always go to them to, to fund their deals. And, uh, you know, when we branched out, we kind of tried to mimic that, um, that flow that we saw in that office. And it was, it was tough just because we, you know, we, we were kind of relatively new to the industry. Um, yeah. we had experience, we, we knew the, how the programs worked and stuff, but just talking on the phone with, with these merchants, it's not the easiest thing in the world, especially when you have no one to, to mentor you and tell you, you know, how to, you know, how the, the rebuttals or, or how to handle certain situations that do, do come, come up when you're, you're on a call. Yeah, absolutely, man. So what, so you guys um, started working for a broker shop, you said down in Florida, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So yeah, so this guy, you know, was running a merchant cash advance company for over 10 years and primary means of generating leads for telemarketing, which worked really, really well for them. And honestly, back then it worked well for everyone. <laughs> if right. they if they've been doing it for a while, especially since the beginning, that was your means of doing it. I did it that way. I was telemarketing and cold calling. But you know, and and you know, entrepreneurial people like yourself have that spark in their brain saying that, ah, if it works, it's great for this company. Maybe right. I can take off and do it, do the same thing, and exactly. double my commissions. Especially right. seeing that. Renewables is a thing, right? It surprises people when I tell, well, there are renewables and they make a lot of money. Well, it actually does happen if you have a good system in place, right? So you break off and you try your own thing, but then you notice, wait a second, it was working there. It's not working here now. What's going on? And it, it has usually has to do with who you're calling, uh, exactly. having the structures in place, the follow-up system. Then you notice it wasn't just the phone call. It was the whole business system that they had in place. That's why you can't just replicate it breaking off. Exactly. Is that what you guys experienced after uh, doing yeah. your own thing? Exactly. Uh, we were, um, we saw that the um, other company was making a lot of money because of the exactly they had a good renewal process. They were tracking when the, um, when the client was eligible for more funds and stuff. So when we started our own, sh uh, our own little company, we were just cold calling, but we didn't have those quality um, clients that were looking for money or we didn't, we weren't calling the people that were looking. For example, you call a renewal client, you know, they've received funding before and that they might be interested in more funds. Mm -hmm. However, we were just calling random list of um, people that we didn't know their situation. So obviously weren't having as well as conversions as the other company. So that's when we started researching and found the blueprint. And luckily with some of the lessons, the different marketing tactics, uh, we've been able to actually target the right people and um, start closing some deals. So what was that? So you, you guys started your own thing. How long before you started the blueprint, you were kind of struggling? What was that time period? Is a couple of months? We're talking about a year? Yeah. I mean, no, we started in, in July. The, and then the blueprint, we started in um, late December. So uh, in, in those six months, we did fund a couple of deals through cold calling and um, 
you know, but it wasn't what we expected at all. So um, that's basically since we started was, you know, kind of like a struggle for us. Yeah. It was so what was the struggle? So it was the inconsistency, like not. Yeah, not like the inconsistency. Okay. Yeah, we just funded one or two deals up per month. You know, it wasn't really. At most, yeah, at like most. one deal a month. Some a lot of months. I would say for the six months before the blueprint, it would be four months of funding, two months of not funding, maybe just one deal. So wow. um, in December, that's when we graduated from the university. Mm -hmm. So we decided to watch the whole, you know, the blueprint go full time, focus on this as a real career. And um, about a month later, we started seeing that our funding volume was up 10 times than all the other previous months. So that's when we really saw the wheels turning and real commissions coming in. Yeah. And so that's, that, that, that transformation happened, happened within ap after 30 days. Is that, is that what, what I would it's say? 30, 45 days. Cause uh, yeah. we were watching the blueprint for, we were taking our time with it, really taking notes, really digesting the knowledge we already had while working. So that was about really 15 days. I'd say two weeks, three weeks of really watching it, paying attention to the mm -hmm. course. And then obviously once we had the um, different lessons that we were taught in the blueprint started applying them it took about 30 days to start really seeing real results okay and let's talk about those results specifically what has been going on since then like how many deals are we talking about the commission structure and things like that yeah i mean last month we did uh, about almost 10k in commissions on um, unit wise it was like about four to five deals but the, the the thing is that now we expanded our market you know now we're just not pitching mca we're right. other other ways of getting revenue and that's I think ideally what, um, what, you know, cause that boom, because when you're cold, cold calling a traditional, uh, merchant, you're pitching them a cash advance, a daily payment, you know, sometimes these guys are looking for something better. They're looking for another way of, um, of obtaining that capital with not having to pay daily or such high interest rates, you know, maybe they're mm -hmm. looking for, for some other, other types of projects that don't require an MCA. So, you know, by expanding our products, we were able to, better fit these clients and and they they see that because most people just offer them offer them an mca product which yeah. they're kind of traumatized by it sometimes because they, they've been through the whole process they are and it's also not not fair for them man like for, right. for some of them it's, it's really not a good fit like they right. can find something fit. else and just because all you know is mca doesn't mean it's the best product right exactly exactly i mean it does have nice commissions and you know it's it, it does work in some okay in some cases right. where people don't qualify for anything else but you always want to give them the best uh product that they that fits their business that fits their business. Than just right product, you know and even if at that point like even if you set them up with mca at least mm -hmm. they know that you've shown them the option saying that hey i would set you up with x product but it doesn't work. And these are the three products that you would be a good fit for. But in your case, it doesn't work. That's why we're doing MCA. So it puts you in a consultative state instead of you just going and kind of pushing for MCA from the get-go because that's all you know. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that, that's great. Uh, so you've been, and can we say that you found your niche and now you're going after that niche? You're kind of niching down in an industry? Yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. exactly. We're, um, what we're really doing is, um, with uh, we're targeting now the clients that we've noticed that take out the most financing, what's easiest for us to close at least. Yeah. Exactly. And then we start focusing on reaching those type of people. So we got lucky because um, when we were only doing a um, merchant cash advance, we weren't doing that much in funding. We didn't know anything about equipment. However, um, you know, just, we just started, like I said, paying attention to the blueprint and now we yeah. have all of our different products. I'm looking at it right now on the uh, commission sheet. Most of it came from different types of products that aren't MCA, which is for us was very surprising. Yeah, which is what, what's going to happen when you start diversifying. Like I, I, I was telling you in one of my YouTube videos that guys who are only, and ladies too, who's, who are only focusing on MCA will have, will, will have to face more and more competition, right? right. Because mm -hmm. anyone who knows half of it, like 30% MCA, they think they can just jump on the phone and start selling it. And you have more of those doing it. That's why sometimes I get the question, oh, is this industry saturated? Well, it is far from being saturated, as you guys know, but depends on where you look at it from. If you're going to pick up a script that you find on Google and start dialing people and pitching MCA, yeah, you have a ton of people doing that because that doesn't require a system. And exactly. if you keep calling at some point, you're going to break something. Like you're going to get some deals funded, but will it take six months, three months, a year? And what, when will your next paycheck come from and where it's going to come from? You, you don't know, right? It's, you know, right. shotgun approach. 
if you try to do that, yeah, there's going to be a lot of competition. But other than that, the universe of alternative lending is massive. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah. Um, so where, where do you guys go from here? What's the goal for the next six months? What are you guys trying to accomplish? Um, well, we're still trying to um, expand our products. We've actually learned a, uh, about a few other products that, um, you know, that we had no idea about. And uh, we're just trying to scale the business as well. Yeah, we're trying to implement more of the, um, we're, we, we do exactly what you, uh, you told us to do, which helped a lot, was um, first focus on making, uh, focusing on getting a client before you have your system set up while working on your systems rather than committing all your time to one. So um, we have a system in place that we'll do most of the day just trying to do client acquisition and then working on our upgrading now our landing, you know, our landing pages, different marketing tools yeah. and focusing on, mm -hmm. you know, we're getting clients through one channel and it's working well, mm -hmm. but now it's about using the other channels that we've been taught and really learning the in and outs of those. Good. So where you are is you've built the foundation right now and you see exactly. how your, your funnel is working. Since, since the foundation is solid ground, you're going to just branch off and build right. uh, mm -hmm. different product lines, different streams of income, different streams of lead generation. From this point on, I think where you guys are going to go in a couple of months is the scale round, right? So yeah. right, we got a system in place. We're doing, let's say, 10, 15K per month. How do we get to 50, 60K? Right, exactly. You have, are, you, are you guys trying to keep this operationally small or are you, are you planning to hire people? No, we, we need to hire. We, wanna, we had a lot of uh, good uh, university friends of ours that's at the old company that we were hiring and they were killing it on the phones with the right lead. So we want to be able to have a, because we, be, we believe in um, having, not just focusing, putting your, all your eggs in one basket. So not yeah. only generating, you know, cold calling, that's it, or only digital marketing and that's it a little bit of both so our goal is to just scale our marketing efforts build a little you know sales team mm -hmm. calling the hot leads that we're getting while us focusing on the different channels and just pumping leads into the business and going from there and doing the closing that's that's very smart man yeah initially any revenue that's coming through needs to go back to the business especially if your, right. your goal is to build an organization so as you know we have many members who want to run a business from home for them, it's a very, you know, uh, simple equation, make money, right. keep it, spend it, whatever. But if you're building an organization, whatever you're making, uh, like you guys shouldn't be making money almost like you may <laughs> back in the organization until because scaling costs money, right? So yeah. jumping from 20,000 to 50,000, 50,000 per month, it's going to require operational system, especially if you want to build an organization, if you're going to work from home, Within a system, what it is simple, keep repeating what you're doing and it's gonna build itself up. But yeah. when you go to the organization route, you wanna build your systems along the way, but since you have the foundation right, um, it's, it's gonna be relatively easy. And you guys are, have a ton of experience with the blueprint, you've been applying every bit of that. That's just a matter of like giving yourself another two, three months, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't even think we've applied like most of it. We've only applied, I would say 60, 70% yet not because we don't want to and we don't know how to apply it it's because we when we do do it we want to make sure it's done perfectly right. correctly well yeah. honestly that's the best use of the blueprint like i tell everyone who's a little perfectionist this is this is not a college class right the goal right. is not to finish it and the goal is not to see who finishes it first uh, you know the the, the 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 skill is not on finishing the modules and the blueprint it is the right. application like if you're going through module three you're applying it. Well, you got to tweak it and make it work before you jump onto the next stage uh, and apply that. So you come back and use it uh, to, to, as a tool to build your business, not something to memorize. That's not the goal. That's why, we're, as you guys know, we're not teaching textbook marketing. Like, what is the definition of this? What, we don't care about that. Right. Like, how do you go from point A to point B? And what is the shortest distance? And this is what you need to do. So I think you guys kind of figured out the best way to use it. I know everyone has different learning styles. Some people mm -hmm. need to devour everything and come back and do it mm -hmm. again. That's, that's normal. But, you know, entrepreneurial people, usually we like to look at things, break them, build them back again, you know, just yeah. build a foundation, move on to the next stage. And I right. see that in you, in you guys. I think that, that that'll work perfectly when you guys are building an organization. Yeah, we've been going step by step. have experience hiring people, managing people, and things like mm -hmm. that, right? Yeah. Another big thing that we're, we've been doing is uh, referral partners. Uh-huh. Because we've been talking to a lot of, um, you know, working with clients and, and dealerships and banks and stuff like mm -hmm. that. You know, we haven't seen big results yet, but um, we've, we've established the relationships uh, for referral partners. 
Yeah, yeah that's planting seeds. So that's going to happen yeah, and yeah. because what happens with the referral partners, they they want us they want to see that you're doing fine first, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Partners, the ones they don't that they're confident because don't forget that a referral is their most valuable asset. Like they're, they're referring their customers to you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a friend, sometimes a family member. They want to make sure they're in good hands and you know the the, the people who's referred to they know what they're doing. Um, so it requires some time, but as you, as you plant more seeds, you'd be surprised. Like you, you're going to have a ton of referral sources, and yeah. sometimes one deal makes it worthwhile. Like yeah. That. yeah, exactly. They yeah. send you one thing; it's like the perfect client for me. And they, they they even say, "Oh yeah, it's not a that 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 big of a client." And I'm looking at it; it's like a hundred thousand dollar MCA. Right. I'm like, okay. Yeah. This. And you know, once you get that done, then a lot more starts coming in. Uh, yeah. so you're definitely planting your seeds. That's definitely good. Um, so as a final thought, I don't want to keep you guys long. Uh, what would you say to someone who's considering getting into this business or considering joining the blueprint? Uh, what, what mm-hmm. would you recommend them? That they can start off. Like what I love about this is low barrier to entry. I mean, me and Sergio were funding like our first three deals out of our school library. People would get mad at us, <laughs> like literally get mad at us because we're trying to like talk to clients, but we didn't want to walk all the way outside because the signal wasn't good outside. <laughs> so we were trying to our voices shut in the library. So look, we could fund deals from there. There's no reason why someone can't fund tons of deals from their house. Like we see Daniel in the videos, yeah. does it from his home and like he's crushing it. So the barriers of entries are low. So that's what I love about anyone who's looking to join. It's not difficult to start. Just pay attention, digest it, take your time. And it's really, I mean, this is, I, if I didn't have prior MCA industry knowledge, I would still think this is the easiest route to go, honestly. Right. This is kind of like the mentorship you need to start. Um, we've had industry experience and we didn't know about all these, um, exactly. mm-hmm. sources of income that we, we were open to, you know? Um, and we had a two and a half years of experience in the industry working for a big ISO shop. So, um, you know, if you're getting started, this is a really, really great program to, to learn the industry and learn how you can make money from, from home or without prior experience. Yeah, Sergio, thank you. And you touched on a great point because sometimes I get these questions from people who want to who think about joining and they think that, oh, should I just go work for an MCA company for a year to learn the business? Mm-hmm. That's right. that person. <laughs> no, yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, even if they want to go that route, which I wouldn't, I, I personally, as I wouldn't want to, but um, I, I learned a lot more in like in the course than I would at the actual shop just because right. it's a different type. At the shop, they're teaching you how to sell, but here you're teaching about the industry, about the ins and outs, about the different programs, about what there is to offer, about what the actual program is, what you're offering the client, how it can help them. That's If you want to work for an MCA shop, great, but this is going to put you ahead in the sales and understanding what you're doing. You want to start your own MCA shop or just, you know, business consultant, this is by far going to teach you the most too. So mm-hmm. you can do both routes really with, with the knowledge you're teaching. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you're starting out, you, you, just like you said, if you want it, go do it. But know that your boss's job is not to train you on the industry and the business. Exactly. Like, He's not going to tell you everything. He's just yeah. going to get you <laughs> in your little box and tell you a, a, a part of the process, and then someone else is going to do the other part. You're not going right. to do it. So you're not going to be one day. He's not going to get in, get you, get get you in, in his in his room and tell you all the basics of the business and fun. Right. That's the, He's just trying to keep you busy so you can make more money. Right. From him. He's not going to tell you how much commission you make. <laughs> they can make on a deal. He's just going to give you one percent and then you're gonna, yeah, you're going to start out that way. So if someone is play, if they're looking for a job again, it's a great business model. You can go work to make some money. But if the question is whether I should, I want to start this business, whether I should go work for someone first is a horrible idea. Um, yeah, terrible. Yeah, so you, you're just going to go through so much stuff that you don't really need, need to go through in order <laughs> to learn the business and you're going to come out more bruised than ever. So yeah. you might want to just uh, you know start the business the right way. But yeah. uh, guys, any, any last comments before I let you go? Um, I mean, this industry is great. The commissions are great. You can make a ton of money if you just, yeah, man, you know, get, get everything right, get the systems right. And, um, I mean, you can work from home on your cell phone, take time off. You know, if you have everything in place, you, it's a really great industry to be in. It's yeah. almost too good to be true, I think. <laughs> yeah, and, like, we didn't think we were, you know, we're going to be our own bosses at 22, honestly. Like, we, yeah. we didn't choose to uh, start our own company because we wanted to. You know, things happen. So, we were like, okay, we have to make money. This We know the MCA industry a little bit. So, luckily, after the blueprint, it really helped to get the wheels rolling. So, that was super exciting. 
Yeah, man, you guys are like the uh, like the dream come true at a young age. Yeah, it is. College kid, they graduate and they're looking for the best job they can get. But yeah, you right. partner up and you have your own business, your own office, and, mm-hmm. and you have the system in place. That's just, I don't know if it gets better than that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so a lot of our friends are working nine to five for a company. You know, they're like amazed that, that we're our own, you know, bosses. We have our own company. They, It's just mind blowing to them. Still, it's, it's yeah. still strange, but no, it's great. <laughs> it's really, really great. <laughs> hey, man, yeah, both of you, like, it's, I, I, I t- truly enjoy getting to know you more. We got to do this more often, but keep going yeah. with, your, with your progress. I know you guys always plug yourself in within the community and things like that, but don't, don't hesitate to reach out to me personally if you need anything from me personally. But um, love this interview, man. I, I, I love it. So I truly enjoyed it, but thanks so much. Great having you guys. Yeah, no, thank you. We're going to have to come to one of the mastermind sessions next time. Absolutely. I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I'll let you guys know when I do it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Take care, guys. Have yeah, a good day. Awesome. Have a good one. Bye-bye.